What's up, divas and devos? So, you guys, it's Real Talk Wednesday, and I am back. I am, like, exhausted. I'm tired. I was really actually going to do, like, not just today's video, but I was going to do, like, probably, like, two or three other ones. But you know what? I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I think it's because I just got back in the swing of things from just being out of YouTube for, like, a few weeks. So, I am, like, overtired. I just came from the doctor for my second post-op check after my hysterectomy. So, things look pretty good, you know. He said I am healing, but it does still need some more time. Um, tomorrow, Thursday, will be six weeks. So, you know, it takes, like eight weeks they said but I can go back to exercising now he said like my normal exercising so a bitch will be doing some squats let me tell y'all okay first of all I know that you know I, I know that me as a person I am really kind of like I'm very impatient I'm a I'm a very impatient person and you know at least I can admit to that I'm really impatient if I tell you to go upstairs and get me something and I tell you where it's at. I don't know. I expect you to be back down the steps in like within 10 seconds. So that's how impatient I can be. I don't take it out on anybody. I just realize that and I have to stop myself. Six weeks later, my stomach has gone down quite a lot since like the video. Um, but it's still swollen in the areas where they put the anchor stitches on the sides. So it's very sore there still to the touch and it's still swollen. And like for me, I feel sometimes very like antsy and anxious. I get very like, you know, anxious about it because I, I expect it to be like back to normal. Like I, I, I feel like I should look like back to normal. And granted, I already did have a pouch, but now it's a little bit something different. So I kind of get a little bit antsy and anxious and like impatient with those things. And like today, like when I went to the doctors, he did tell me that, you know, you're still healing. Your stomach is still swollen. So, you know, I was fine with that. But the part that just really like pissed me the fuck off was the fact that I gained seven and a half pounds. Let's just round it off to eight. Okay. A bitch gained eight pounds in that bit of time and I was so pissed off like you know I was literally angry and 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 I couldn't get too angry because I realized like April you can't fault nobody you can't really even fault yourself you could barely move you weren't supposed to do anything yeah you took your walks around the corner but um, I'm like a really impatient person and I think I really need to work on that a lot because sometimes when you're impatient shit just does not go the right way and you know the old saying Good things come to those who wait, but I feel like, you know what, I've worked so hard on losing weight and just to gain like eight pounds back was just like, oh my God, great, just fucking great. So that's why, look, now I'm going to sit here and drink, sip this iced coffee like I should be, right? Funny thing about the iced coffee, and I love QT's iced coffee, not as much as I like Dunkin' Donuts, damn sure ain't fucking with Starbucks, but I told the lady light iced. So when I left out, you know, she put some whipped cream on it too for me. And when I left out, I was drinking. At first I was like, damn, this feels kind of warm. Light ice means a light ice. Not Don't fill my cup all the way up to here with the ice because I hate when stores do that. They put your ice all the way up to here. Like, come on now. I just wanted a little bit of ice. This lady didn't put any ice at all in there. I said, you know what, April, just go home. Just go home. Just take your ass and go home. So, you know, I left the doctors. I went and got that fake ass iced coffee. And I just realized with myself, like, you know what? You'll be back on your grind. Just get back on your grind. The only the only thing that made me somewhat happy about the weight gain was, thank God it didn't go to my neck. Because, you know, when I, get, when I gain weight, my face gets fat. Then I don't have no neck. And trust me when I tell you, I have looked at old videos from a year ago before I got my teeth fixed, before I lost the weight. And even when I had my teeth fixed and I did, didn't did lose the weight yet, I was looking at myself. You ever look at like your old pictures? You know, you look at your old pictures. Back then you thought you was the shit. You thought you was real cute and stuff. You was look, you, know, you look at yourself and be like, oh, girl, you're looking good. And then, you know, years have gone by and you may have changed something. You may have changed your hairstyle. You may have changed the way you do your eyebrows, your makeup, whatever. You might have lost weight. You might have fixed your teeth. Anything. You might have changed something. And then you look at those pictures and you just be like, girl, what was you even thinking? Like, seriously, though? You was not cute. That's how I be looking at my old pictures, like, I, or my old videos. I go back and I look at like my old videos, and I'm just like, oh, you really did. Did you really think you looked cute with 
your teeth like like you know say I never thought my teeth were cute because you know they spread and I had that bad gap just due to you know teeth work wisdom teeth being removed and so I was always ashamed of my teeth I was always ashamed of my teeth for like quite some years probably like 10 years because that's how bad they had gotten over time so that was the one thing that I never really cared for you you guys never really would see me smile like you know I wasn't cheesing or anything like that but I would just look at the pictures and how I was bigger and I would just realize like I didn't seem, I did, when I looked at myself then, I didn't look big to myself then. But then when I look at myself now, it's like, please, April, don't go back to like that. Like, you need your neck. Like, I need a motherfucking neck, okay? Seriously, like, that's all I ever be complaining about. But I'm glad that the weight did not go back to, like, me, like, my face pudging out or my neck disappearing. Oh, but then, you know, it still kind of puts you in a funk. Like, I don't really want to see the scale say 198. I don't really want to see the scale say that. I don't want to see the scale say that. I'd rather go back to 191, where the fuck it was at, or 190, where the fuck it was at. Like, I'm trying to get to, like, 180. And this whole surgery has fucked me over so bad, like, to where it's like, here I go. I got to start all over again. But, I mean, like, that's not my New Year's resolution. Like, people put a resolution on, a resolution for their New Year's. I don't really have no New Year's resolutions. To me, it's goals. Like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what's good for me. This is good for my health. And plus, I also noticed that being that I haven't been able to exercise in all those week, weeks, my knees, when I walk up the steps, my knees are starting to hurt again. And I can hear the cartilage in it, like, cr um, crunching. You ever, like, I'm not sure. That there's probably people out there who, you know, your cartilage and your knees, you ever hear it? Like, when you're walking or you're bending your knees, you can hear it crunching. Well, that's how both of my knees are. So I used to have to get, like, the cortisone shots. In them. But then I realized, you know what, April? Get off your ass and start walking and exercising and build up your your your, your stamina. Build, build yourself back up. And that's what I did. And my, my knees were fine. Now them shits is going back to shit. And I really, you know what, since he done told me today, tomorrow, I'm back to my exercises. And that is a given. Like, I'm excited about that. But other than that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really too happy about that. But, hey, it's all good. It is what it is. At least it didn't go to, you know, listen, I wish some of the fat would have went to my boobs because I lost some of those. But, you know, at least it didn't. You know, I'm not really sure if it went to my stomach because it's already a little bit swollen still. And that's another reason why I haven't done, like, I have all these trial and hauls that I have to do, like four of them. And I haven't been able to put the clothes on only because, you know, my stomach and the surgery. So I will be doing that, you know, probably this coming weekend. I've been putting off a lot of shit. Um, I'm, like, really behind in doing, like, a lot of things. Um, the, the most things that I've been doing is doing wig videos and making wigs for my website. So with that being said, a girl has got her own little mannequins now for her wig site. Not like, like they not my own, like they my own. Cause you know, I bought them, my husband bought them for me, but they're like the ones that you see on like hair VB, like the really nice mannequins that you, you know, with the wide body. So I got a couple of those. So those, that way I won't have to model all the wigs, especially the brand new ones that I make for the website. And plus, I did get some new materials for making wigs. You know, I like to share everything with you guys. I'm going to show this in the haul too. But I wanted to show you guys because someone asked me about like other wig mannequin making heads, like a styrofoam head. And like, I'm going to be honest with you guys, you cannot use a styrofoam head to make a wig with. You cannot because they are 17 inches in circumference. They are way too small for your head. A human head is like average size 21 and a half to 22, 23 inches in circumference. So you cannot use a styrofoam head for making wigs. Some people like to build them up with tape and shit, masking tape. But why even bother doing all that? Like that's so much time you have to measure. That just takes a lot of time in to making the perfect head circumference. And instead you could just go on like Amazon. Y'all know how I feel about Amazon and get you a wig block making head. So for those people, I've had two people and it probably was more ask me what about a styrofoam head? Because I didn't show that in my video that I did like a while ago of the supplies. I don't use them. The only time I use them is when I'm drying my wigs and I really didn't use them for that. I'd have like a regular mannequin like you would see at the wig stores. All the wigs sitting on, I would dry them on those. But I have so many wigs and so many of those. Sometimes I run out. So I do have like four styrofoams that, you know, I put plastic on them and then I 
put the wigs on them to dry. I don't use them to make wigs, but I'm going to show y'all real quick, and I'm going to definitely show y'all in a haul um, for those who have been asking me why not the styrofoam, because they're not the right circumference. So recently, I did do a busy video a few weeks ago, and I'm going to make this real quick, and it was a, uh, a few months ago, and it was the supplies that I used. And so I did show you guys on one of these. These are the canvas wig block heads. Now, I actually got a new one. This is a brand new one, okay? This is a 23-inch circumference, okay? I noticed that with the 22 inches, they can end up being really tight for those who have, like, a lot of hair, thick hair. So 23 is always the best to get. And these are really inexpensive. I did get this from Amazon from a beauty vendor called BHD Beauty. Um, they actually sent these to me and I was really happy about that because I didn't have to buy them, but they're super cheap on their website. So you can get different sizes in these. Plus, these make your wigs fit perfectly. The pins go through them. This is the right circumference. I would say 22 to 22 and a half, nothing smaller. Plus, they sent me this one too, which is also a 23 inch. And this one is also for wig block on um, wig making. I'm not really sure that it's, it, it's, it's a little bit different. This one has, it feels like a styrofoam-ish or a different type of material inside versus this one um and also you can see the shape is a little bit different so i have not used this to make a wig with because i do like these better but i'm pretty sure that you can with this i have to tell you guys the real fish reason what these are for but i'm pretty sure that you can make a wig with them but me personally i don't i use them just to style the wigs on but the last thing that i'm gonna show you guys is the, um, from the same vendor this has become my favorite item since they have sent this to me so if you guys are in beauty school or you need to have to be in beauty school but you have to get this like if you have to get this to make a wig and you definitely have to get one of these like okay seriously this is um i'm not really sure the circumference of this but don't think you're gonna make a wig on this do not use this to make a wig but these little rubber mannequin type things are so cheap and I like the fact that when you puncture a hole in with the pin, you really don't see them. Plus, they have like a line, and you probably can't see it, but they have a line going around the head of where the hairline and the nape is at. So I use this when it's time for me to curl my wigs, okay? I put this on my wigs. I put my wigs right on here, and I put the hairline right where this is at. And this actually works amazing for making, or excuse me, amazing for styling your wigs. Only for styling your wigs and stuff like that, because that's what they use at the beauty schools. Plus, because it feels so much like skin when you want to brush down the hairs and stuff and lay the hair, it just lays perfectly. So I would highly suggest getting you one of these just so that way you can style your wigs on them. These are like the perfect, the perfect head shape, the perfect feel, the perfect hairline. You can get your wig style in a little bit of time versus styling one on these. I don't really like to style them on this, but this here I found. These fill out the wig perfectly, and it just makes styling so much easier. So I will link BHD Beauty's um, link down below for you guys. I love this thing. Like, she looks so pretty and real. Like, her lashes came off, but you can always glue some on. But listen, if she had a body, I would put a wig on her and put her on my website. But I love these. These things are so inexpensive. So, you know, for those who've asked me, that is that um, with that. And I'll definitely link it below. They have came in handy. All three wig block heads are amazing, and I'm really happy about them because you guys know I love to make the wigs. So I've been really busy doing that, making a lot of wigs for my website because I bought a lot of hair and closures and stuff like that over the past year, like building stuff up. So, you know, I am ready to do what I got to do. But other than that, you know, nothing different, nothing new. My husband does come home in March, um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, is it going to be a change? It's definitely going to be a change for me, you know, because I have been living all this time alone without him, but you know, it's always like, you know, it's not a sacrifice because you do stuff for people because you love them. And I'm, it's not because I'm not doing anything for him. I'm doing it for us and our kids and I'm excited about it. And is it going to be a change? Of course it's going to be a change because, you know, I'm used to doing what I do, which is, um, 
really not much of anything, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some days I don't cook, which is a lot of the times. And, you know, I buy stuff so that the kids can cook for themselves. Um, and I, I cook when I want to. I'll do the laundry when I want to because the kids do their own shit. But I do clean my house every single day. So, but still, it's a different, it's going to be a change because, of course, I will be sleeping next to him and I'll be waking up with him. And I'm excited about that. Like, I know the only thing that gets on his nerve is all the hair on the floor in my bathroom. Like, it drives me crazy when I see strands of hair. So I know that's probably the part that's going to bother him. But I'm really excited about that because, you know, as a person, it, we, we have to mature in life. And sometimes people do mature and sometimes people don't mature in life. But, you know, I feel like we have both matured a lot. And sometimes a breakup is a good, healthy thing. You know, it allows the person to be able to see what they had, see what they're missing, see where they're coming from, and see the things about themselves that they need to change and just better for themselves you know say if not for that other person but it's definitely for themselves so I feel like we have matured a lot and I definitely know that the love is there like you know what I'm saying like I definitely love him and I know he definitely loves me and that's a good thing because we have been apart for like you know a few years and the love is still there and it's even stronger so I'm really excited about you know what I'm saying oh she has glass eyes I didn't even realize she had glass eyes until just now um but I'm really excited about it because you know when I moved out here, I really, you know, we was apart and we had broken up or whatever. Or I broke up with him and left him. But I still, in the back of my head, I still wish that we were together. And I still wish that he was here. And I still wish that this change that I had made for me and the kids was involved in him. So, you know, that bothered me a lot. And there were a lot of times, like, when I say a lot of times, I can't even count on one hand or two hands or even a bunch of people's hands. Probably like a million times that I thought to myself, like, or imagined, basically imagined to myself, like laying next to him or how it would be when he was here. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person that does things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think of the person and imagine how your life would be with them in the picture, with them at with you at the present time. So there have been so many times that I have thought about that and imagined it. And so now I'm like really happy and excited that, you know, it is finally able to come to play. So I'm really excited about, you know, going back to New York at the end of February with Mumsy and Nay and just going to get my husband. Plus, my daughters want to go see New York City. They haven't seen, talk of the, speak of the devil, here he's calling me. Hello? I love you too. All right, I love you too. But anyway, so like I was saying, I'm really excited about it and I'm happy. I know like, you know, my future is will change, definitely, but all for the better. You know what I'm saying? We are both more calm people, and I'm happy about that because I can be a little bit um, feisty. I can definitely get out of hand, and I will. I am one who will, um, I, like he used to say, my words will kill a person. So, you know, I have become a lot more, um, what's the right word for it? Relaxed, I guess. I, I've become a lot more relaxed and a lot more tolerable to things, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't tolerate a lot, but I I have learned to tolerate certain things. Like I'm not gonna about I'm not about to jump out the window over some bullshit anymore. Like I noticed that if I'm really uptight about something, then it's best for me not to say anything to you at that present time about it. Because if I do, then the way that I come off is going to be something that you probably are not going to want to deal with. And I'm probably definitely going to hurt your feelings in the process of me going off. That's what I call the spazzing off. And I do have my moments with the spazzing off shit. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we have both matured a lot. Definitely him. And I guess, you know, with me, he has said that too. I mean, I'm, I am a different person. I just, you know, I don't let a lot of shit bother me anymore. And I just try to stay away from the negative shit. And I guess that's a main reason why I just keep to myself and I don't have friends. Like I try to keep to myself and you know, and I try to stay away from the drama and the bullshit because I feel like, you know what, I'm too old for this. I'm about to be 45 and I'm really not up for all the bullshit and the drama, you know what I'm saying, with anyone. And just like what I had to tell my kids on the 1st of January last week, you know, I had to inform them the same thing too. Like my oldest ones, like I'm, this is 2019. I'm not doing none of this shit. I'm not about to be irritated. I'm not stressed out. I'm not being stressed out or aggravated by any of you guys. You guys know you have until the end of this month to where you guys are to move out. And I'm going to be nice and give you to the second week of February. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? Because I've already given you time months and months in advance of when you guys have to move out by. Plus, not only that, but I'm like not harboring a fugitive, but I feel like this, like, you know, 
as long as you allow them to be under your roof and they don't have a carefree worry in the world or they don't their, their responsibilities are limited then they're not going to grow up as young adults and i think that i have shielded them long enough especially my daughter Dati. like i've shielded her enough and i've done way too much above and beyond i've went overboard for her like seriously overboard and i don't really see any type of progress with her and her life like meaning like clean your room or get a better job do something with yourself i don't see that progress and i feel like as long as you live here you're just not going to be progressing because you know that if you live here with me even though you're not paying me my rent i'm still gonna have to pay my rent because i'm not trying to be homeless so i just feel like you know they're not a burden to me, but it's time that you guys grow up on your own and see how the real world is. Because I had to do it at 19, and I was a lot more mature. So this year, I'm not putting up with a lot of shit. Like, I, my health was, like, a serious issue, and I was very unaware of that um, until, you know, later on in that afternoon after my surgery. And I just feel like, with me, I really wasn't focusing a lot on my health because I was so irritated and stressed out about the shit that was going on in my home with my two eldest kids not getting their shit together that, you know, I kind of like blocked the pain. I didn't block the pain because the shit hurt, but I kind of like put off going and going because of this distress. And so I'm glad that I was able to catch things when I did. And I'm not going to allow, like, no stress and no irritation from two grown-ups in my home. Like, so that's the reason why, you know, it's farewell. It's time to move on and grow up. And, of course, you're going to struggle. Of course, you're going to struggle with your bills. Of course, you're going to struggle with raising your kids. But that's a part of life. And you have to realize that to become a better adult. So, yeah, I did have that talk with them. And, I mean, like, I'm excited that it'll be, like, me, my husband, and my two kids um, are two two kids and I'm not putting anyone out because of those reasons I'm putting and I'm I'm not putting them out I'm, I'm moving them out because you have to grow up you you cannot be here in my home and be disrespectful to me you know what I'm saying saying shit like you know I've had an altercation with my daughter back in October and she blasted it all on fucking social media to talk about me because I didn't want to watch her kid like come on man then you know she had the audacity to go so far as to say to me in a text message when my plane was about to take off I hope your plane crashes and you die okay for real and I don't remember if I told you guys that, but that was what was said to me in October. And just posted a bunch of other shit on Instagram. And then with, with that, be, with that you know, you post shit on Instagram. You got all these people that's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. You don't even know these people that's following you personally. And here they are coming talking about, oh, I hope things get better between you and your mom, et cetera, et cetera. Bitch, you don't even fucking know me. You don't even know the real tea. I wish you would have told y'all the real motherfucking tea. How I haven't gotten rent from her since August. You don't clean your room. You don't barely work you know what i'm saying like it's a whole bunch of shit and you can go on my social media talking about oh i'm just gonna kill myself because of her like i'm not a bad person i expect shit out of you be responsible i'm not gonna constantly keep doing shit for you and then when you write shit like that about me on social media it makes me look bad to people but it's to me it's like i don't really give a fuck how i look to you like i know what the fuck is going on in my household there's a reason why she acting like that there's a reason why i'm not watching your kid you can't just leave your kid with me all the time and think that i'm it's, it's parent my name is not on the birth certificate but not only that, you know what I'm saying, you write shit like that about, oh, you hope my plane crashes and shit like that. So, you know, when I got that message, I was like, oh, word. I hurried up and called before the plane took off. And I was like, I'm going to see you quicker and sooner than you think. Now I'm coming back before. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay. And then, you know, flag your post. And what happens? Knock, knock on my door. Guess who's coming knocking on my door while I'm in New York? And... The Instagram police. Now, I'm going to call them the Instagram police because when you write shit about yourself on Instagram and, you know what I'm saying, you, t you, 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 you threaten and bodily harm to yourself or someone and someone flags it and reports it, Instagram gets that notification. And then they look at your account from where the phone number is registered and they call the local police in that area. And what happened? Well, my daughter, Nay, calls me and tells me that the police are here. For who? My daughter, Tati. And what did they do? They came and they... They didn't arrest her, but they, they removed her from the home and took her to the hospital to be evaluated because you're talking about you want to kill yourself on social media because, oh, your mother's a bitch, et cetera, et cetera. 
So see, things that you do to others come back and bite you in the ass in a way that you just really don't expect. And it's just too much bullshit and too much drama. So, you know what I'm saying? It's time for you to just grow up and go about your business. So that is how my 2019 will be. And I'm pretty sure, like, you know what I'm saying? Because you have that time frame to go about your business and find your own. I'm pretty sure that you guys will probably see something about me on social media, like some probably sometime in February or whatever, talking about, oh, she didn't take me out. or You know what I'm saying? We already know how it is. We already know the real deal. And I'm already prepared for that shit. But I know, like, you know, like this. You always hear the bad shit that somebody might do to you, but in reality, it's not bad that I put you out and I made you grow up. It's not bad. It's the fact that this is reality, sweetheart. You cannot be in somebody else's surroundings and dwellings and think that you could disrespect them and not do what the fuck you're supposed to do, and they're not going to get tired of this shit. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, don't tell half the story. Tell the whole motherfucking thing, because a bitch like me stay with receipts, okay? I have receipts, meaning pictures, phone calls, text messages screenshots a bitch has plenty of receipts for all of the bullshit and i'm tired of it like this is the shit that i've been going through for like the whole year and i'm definitely tired of it with my son you know say he finally got himself together he you know he's still he's been working at walmart for the past year so he works at nights and you know what i'm saying He's got it together. He got his court cases over, so all he has to do is probation. You know what I'm saying? But he had an issue where he was smoking weed all the time and drinking. And you're 19, you're 20 now. You can't be drinking and coming in here drunk. And like it was a whole bunch of shit. And you know what I'm saying? He had seizures and stuff from. So you, you, you know, it was just like I've had enough. I've had enough. And like I've been there way too much for adults. And when it's my time. That nobody's there for me except for my 16 year old daughter who's here and my daughter Nick Mumsy who's 11. So you know what I'm saying I'm 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 backing the fuck off and it's time like you know like Troop says spread your wings and fly away straight up. So that is the reason why I am doing a change in my whole life and it's not even a change it's for the better of me. I need. I need good vibes around me. I, I can't be around no negativity. I can't be around no bullshit because I know me as a person. I really do get fly off at the mouth and I really do get fly off with the hands. Like I have a problem with sometimes a bitch can't keep her hands to herself. And that means like we about to go toe to toe. Like let's, let's get, that's me. Like I, let's get it. I'm ready to, you know, I can't take too much of this in a disrespect. So I feel like for the best of me, I feel like it's best that I, you know, separate myself from a lot of shit. And the way the law is out here, I'm not trying to go to jail because I'm not trying to waste my money bailing myself out because I refuse to sit in jail. I refuse. So 2019, I'm not saying it's going to be, you know what? It is going to be the best year for me because I am back in the place where I want to be, which is in a relationship with my husband. I love him so much. Like you ever love somebody so much that you don't, you will not allow anybody else to come into your world. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you look at another person, you compare them to what you had and who you really love. And it's like, ugh, like, you know what I'm saying? And I've done that quite a few times, like just on a dating scene, like I would just look at you and you wasn't in comparison. So I never gave anyone that I went on a date with a chance just because of the fact of, you know, where my heart really was. So I'm really happy about that. And, you know, it'll be a hurdle. It'll be, it won't be a struggle. But, you know, we might clash in the beginning, like not even clash, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, I do go stay with him for like two weeks at his house, but not even clash. But, you know, I have to move things around in my, my closet and shit. You know, I got to be nice and give him some closet space and some dresser space. But, you know, we will be doing things a little bit different. For those who've asked me about my pink room, that will no longer be pink. Okay, so, yes, there will be some change. We're going to get some adult. Well, this is adult furniture. I just like white and pink. That's my favorite color. So we will be getting some husband and wife looking furniture. Okay. So definitely that. All right. But, um, yeah, so that is been my update. My little grandson is my new little grandson who was born November 18th. He is almost three months old already. Damn. Time flies by so fast. No, oh, he's almost two months old. My bad. Time flies by so fast and he's so damn cute. He's adorable. But anyway, so we're going to get into this video real quick. You know what I'm saying? I have so much to do. And I was going to do like a haul. Like, you know what I'm saying? I have this from Happiness Boutique that I was supposed to binge show. And I've been so excited to try this jewelry out. But um, 
I'm definitely going to save it for when I get dressed up, you know, so you guys can see because it's really, really some nice stuff. So, you guys, let's get into this real talk. I'm sorry if I kept you guys for so long running off at the mouth. But if you have a real talk that you would like for me to do, you can go ahead and send me an email to MuffinIsMyLovers2012 at gmail.com. Um, put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of the people who you're referring to or talking about in your email, then you can always let me know that you change names. If you don't, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to change it for you. So, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. You might have changed it, but you didn't tell me. So, I just want to keep you safe. You know, keep you out of harm's way, bitch. Keep you out of harm's way. And the wig that I'm wearing today, I've actually had it off for like um, three days. Who the hell is this by? Why wigs? I think it is. Why wigs? Yeah, why wigs? So, yeah, the front is not looking that great right now. Because, like I said, I've had it off for a few days. So, it's kind of like, you know, all over. I tweezed it and shit. But, yeah, that's why I got stuck last time. So, let's get into this real talk, you guys. For real. Before it be, like, a real long talk. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. Okay, so her name is not changed because I can look at her email too. So we're going to call her Kiki. Hey, April, my name is Kiki. I'm 19 and I've been watching you for a while. So I've been messing around with this guy named Hunter for a few months now. We went to the same middle school and high school together until I switched to online high school. Now where I live, now where I live, there's a bar and I went out for the first time with my friends for one of my friends because she was getting married the following day. So we went out to the bar, you know, just to chill and hang out. So I bumped into Hunter. We were dancing and everything. He was like, come home with me, blah, blah, blah. So I was like super nervous. So I just told him to come back to the hotel with me and my friends were staying at for the night. You can come and chill with us there. So we went back, me and Hunter messed around. And then he goes on to tell me that I mean something to him and like he's never fucked a black girl, basically. Hunter's wife. So after that, we started hanging out. Me and Hunter started hanging out every week. He would call me, you know, whatever. So that started in the beginning of September. Now it's a few months in and I don't know, like even when we first started talking, like we wouldn't text throughout the day. He wouldn't text me throughout the day. I wouldn't text him throughout the day. He would kind of just hit me up when he wanted to and I would go with it. But as time goes on, he's telling me he loves me and he would never text, but he would never text me after I leave his home until like the next day. And then I would, or the next time I came over or he wanted me to come over. So I just feel like since I'm not white and what I'm not white and what he's usually typically used to talking to, he's not trying to put any pressure on me on that level. But he was making me feel like, you know, he liked me. So the last time we hung out, we smoked and drank and, you know, we hung out and then he took me back home. Then I texted him and he left it open, left it red and didn't reply. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck? This is not the first time he's done this, by the way. So I messaged him again. Like, it kind of annoys me how you can text me when you want, but I can't text you whenever I want and he doesn't respond. So I met this other dude that's in the army. His name is Aiden. He's super sweet, shows me so much attention. We've been talking for the past few days on FaceTime, all day texting, everything, and I'm going to meet him this weekend. But I find myself still thinking about Hunter, the white dude, and looking at Hunter's Snapchat score, seeing it go up, and wondering if he was seeing someone else or anything. But in the back of my mind, Hunter doesn't even have a car. He's 19. He doesn't have a job. And he drinks and smokes with his friends all day, all the time. So I just don't know what to do. I'm sorry this is so long, April. I love you. So Kiki is um, black, of course. Kiki got herself a white boy named Hunter. They both 19, okay? So, you know, Kiki them been 
messing with Hunter. They met each other. They already knew each other, basically. They knew each other from middle school or high school, whatever. They went to, was it middle school? They, they went to the same middle school and high school together. But she stopped going to high school and started doing it online. So, you know, she lost touch with Hunter. I don't even know if he was really that cool with her back then. But anyway, you know, she went out to the bar to chill with her friends because her friend was getting married the next day. She runs into Hunter. They dance and she, you know, she runs into white boy Hunter. No, no shade in white. I'm just, you know, let y'all know who I'm talking about. She, she runs into white boy Hunter and, you know, they dancing at the bar, whatever, chilling. He tells her, Hunter's trying to, you know, get her to come back to his place. She says, why don't you come to the hotel with me and my friends? We could kick it there. You know, they start messing around. Basically, he says he loves her. She means stuff to him. He ain't never fucked no black girl before. Okay. So, but then the, in the instrument of it all, Hunter won't text her every day. And when she texts him, he don't reply. But he'll text her when he feels like it, and she'll reply. And now she done met somebody else named Aiden, who's in the army, and they be FaceTiming each other every day, and they they text and they speak to each other every single day, all day, which is cool. So about she about to go meet him, but in the back of her mind, she still got hunted on the brain because. You know, she, who knows why she still got Hunter on the bread. Kiki, first of all, let me tell you something. You don't know what to do. Let me tell you something. You young, you 19 years old. It don't mean you got to have a relationship with somebody right now. But let me tell you something. If you do want a relationship, sweetheart, don't get with the loser. Be a chooser, honey. Don't get with the loser. I'm not saying that Aiden, I mean, excuse me. I'm not saying that Hunter is a loser. But from what you are telling me, he don't seem like he a winner neither. The the young man, <laughs> I was about to call him a nigga. The, oh, fuck it. The nigga, um smoke and drink all day long. First of all, that's so unattractive and that's so turned offish. Like if you can smoke and drink all day long, and that means you ain't having no type of priorities. You ain't got no type of responsibility. You damn sure don't got a job. Like she said, he ain't got a car. He probably live at home because if he didn't live at home, then how would he be able to pay his rent? So I'm guaranteeing you guys that he lives at home, which is nothing wrong with that at the age of 19, but at least try to get it the fuck together and do something with your goddamn life. Like seriously, that's the problem wrong with these young adults today. They feel like, oh, because you live at home and you you are entitled to live there and your parents must pay for you to live there and we must do shit for you. Now nah, it don't work out like that because we could be going to the, we could be here today and gone tomorrow. Then what the fuck is y'all going to do? Nothing because y'all have not done anything to make sure that you'll be able to have something to do if we are passed away or something happens to us. That's the problem with the youth today. They feel like they are entitled to shit and that they can sit around and do nothing because they're 19 or 18 or 17. No, motherfuckers, you have to work. You have to do something with yourself. This is your life, not ours. Live it to the best of your ability and do some shit with yourself. So, Here's the thing. You done met some other boy named Aiden who's in the army. Already he got a future for himself because the nigga's in the army. I don't know what color he is. I don't, it doesn't really even matter because color has nothing to do with laziness. People come in all shades and races when it comes to laziness, unmotivated, just dumb and not doing shit with themselves. That comes in all shades and races. So we don't have to like, you know, exclude anybody because every race is like that. Lazy. There is a lazy race. There is... Lazy people in every race, unmotivated. I can go on and on and on. But you got somebody who is basically already doing something with themselves. You know what I'm, I'm trying to get out the sunlight. You got somebody who's already doing something with themselves far as career-wise, future-wise. Now, he's in the Army. Not saying he's going to be in the Army all his life, but at least he started some fucking where. At least he started somewhere. And you got somebody who's in the back of your head named Hunter who only calls you or texts you when he wants some pussy, some panani, some cootie cat. You know what I'm saying? Some a JJ, some whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's the only time the nigga is texting you. Because when you texting him, he's leaving that shit open, meaning red and not responding to you. I'd be damned if I'm going to text somebody and they don't respond to me. You got two times to do that shit to me. And after that, I don't fucks with you no more. I will not text you. And you text me, I'm definitely not going to respond. So, you know what I'm saying? He don't respond to your messages. He tells you he loves you. And he probably tells you he loves you because, um, let's see, he can get the cootie cat whenever he wants. Because basically he has been because you've been responding to his text messages when he wants to see you and be bothered with you. So obviously he got to keep you going. He got to keep the relationship going. Like, you know, the friends with benefits kind of relationship. Because that's what the fuck you going through right now, Kiki. You got some friends with benefits relationship. Hunter don't give a damn about you. Hunter don't even give a damn about his damn self. He got friends that he smoke and drink with all day long. Who the fuck want to fuck with somebody who smoke and drink every day, all day, and don't do a goddamn thing with themselves? Ain't got no car, ain't got no job. Bitch, please.
I'll be damned if I'm going to sit around with somebody who ain't got a job, ain't got no car, ain't got shit, but smoke and drink all day long. You got to be out your fucking mind. Now, I'm not saying you got to have a car at 19, but nigga, you got to have something. You ain't got no job to even get a car, to even get bus fare. But you get money so that way you can drink and smoke. There's always a way to get around that. That's the that you know what? That's the funny part that I find with drug addicts or people that are have like bad habits. They won't work, they won't have a job, they won't have they can't pay rent, they can't do shit, but they always find the means to get their drug or their alcohol. Like I I be like, how the fuck do they be surviving? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like how do people that are crackheads or alcoholics survive? Like, they'll be homeless, they won't have shit, but they will have money to get that drug of choice. Like, it it, 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 it boggles my mind. Like, seriously. Like, I, I would be worried about how I'm going to wipe my ass with some toilet paper or just wash. Like, I don't know. I would be trying to get money up for that, but they always seem to get money up for us the bad habit shit. So, you got a loser on your hands, and you asking me, you don't know what to do? I'm going to give you that silent treatment for like a second because I know the fuck, Kiki, you did not ask me. You don't know what to do. Hunter is in the back of your head, girl, because you didn't have shit else to do. That's why. And obviously, you really don't much have much to do because he don't even hit you up like that every day. He only hits you up when he feel like being bothered with you. So are you that free and bored all the time that you could be like convenient for him whenever he wants to call and beckon and call you girl listen let me tell you something the hunter's at the back of your head because you haven't been bothered with anybody else but hunter now you met old dude you you met dude aiden y'all been facetiming each other you guys have been you know kicking it and chilling and you're going to meet him this week and he's in the army that's great but let me tell you something about facetime and what people tell you about social media Never get too involved and get too relaxed and feed into so much of the bullshit that people tell you that you meet online. I don't give a fuck if you meet them face to face or you, you do FaceTime with them. That don't mean shit to me. You can have a FaceTime conversation. We're going to use her, for example. So me and me and Beauty, we FaceTime each other, okay? And I know she look like this and she know I look like this, Okay. And I've seen her pictures on social media. And now we finally get to FaceTime with each other. You know what I'm saying? And me and Beauty, we kicking it. We kicking it. Ha, ha, ha. And then we finally say, we going to meet with each other. We going to meet at the cafe, whatever. So I'm like, all right, girl, I'm going to meet you. I'm not saying I might be getting with her, whatever. It doesn't matter. But, you know, me and Beauty decide we going to meet at the at the cafe. We going to meet at Starbucks, okay? So I'm I'm sitting there waiting for, for Beauty to come. And I'm in myself looking like April. You know what I'm saying? And then... In walks beauty. And I don't know this is beauty because I know this is beauty. Okay, this is beauty right here. But in walks beauty. This beauty. Now we're not even gonna use this. Yeah. We're gonna use this. This in walks beauty. No, I think I'm gonna use the, this this one. In walks beauty. And I don't even know that this is beauty. We're gonna take this out of the question the equation now. So in walks beauty and I'm sitting in, I'm still, I'm sipping my Starbucks, you know, I'm, I'm almost done by now. And so beauty comes up to me, but I don't know this is beauty and I'm, you know, waiting on my phone drinking. I'm like, can I help you? Hi, you April. Yeah. And you are, I'm beauty. And then I got this light bulb in my head. And that light bulb is and you you either could be nice or you could be yourself and be like you don't look anything like your motherfucking pictures. You damn sure don't like the person that I was FaceTiming with. Because beauty then has somebody else FaceTime your ass. Beauty then has somebody else talk to you on the phone. Beauty then use that person who FaceTimes you Instagram and pictures for their own shit. This is the shit that I be talking about social media. So even though you think you're talking to 
Aiden on the FaceTime and stuff, you know what I'm saying? You might be talking to Faden, okay? So when you meet each other, don't be surprised if Aiden don't look like Aiden and he look like Faden, all right? Don't be shocked with that because I'm going to tell y'all, social media is a drug and that shit will have you all fucked up in the mind, brain, emotions, feelings, heart, and all of that shit. So it's great if you meet somebody and y'all ends up hooking up and it becomes like something genuine. But what I'm saying is this. Don't be too desperate to jump in a relationship with somebody because this nigga Hunter ain't working out. Give your time. Give yourself time to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, true indeed. If you like Aiden, you know, try to pursue a friendship with him at first. You know, get to know him. Get to see how he's like. Because, okay, for one, he's in the Army. People that are in the Army don't really act like people that are non-Army people. Their structure and their way of thinking is totally different. So you basically need to make sure that this is the type of person that you want to be around and how his personality evolves throughout the time of y'all being friends. So this is the one thing that I'm telling you guys. Make sure that, you know, you know that... You need to, you just, just to make sure, bitch, that you, you get to know this person. You know what I'm saying? Don't be shocked if he ain't who he say he is. And I'll use a prime example. So my son, Wuzzle, he was like, oh, you know, he came home. He was like, can I invite this girl over that I've been talking to? And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. What she look like? You know what I'm saying? Because I think my son's is damn cute. So I want to know what she look like. So he shows me a picture. He was like, she, first he tells me that she's like part Korean or something. And I was like, okay. So then he shows me a picture of her and like, I ain't trying to be mean or nothing, but I see the picture on Instagram and she's a big, she was kind of like, her face was kind of chubby or whatever. And I ain't got nothing against that. But I'm like, she don't look like she fucking Korean. She looked like she Mexican. So she had this Dora the Explorer hairstyle and I'm not even trying to be funny. It was a Dora the Explorer hairstyle. She had a Dora the Explorer, except for she didn't have the bang. She had the part in the middle. So I'm saying to myself, like this hairstyle is not, I'm saying it to myself, this hairstyle is not flattering to her face shape. Like this is not for her. And I'm looking at the rest of her pictures and I'm like, okay, she's definitely needs to change her hairstyle up because this is not flattering to her face. It's making her face look bigger. And so when I look at her, I'm like, mm. She not ugly, but she damn sure wasn't, like, my son material. Like, okay, maybe he just bored or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, maybe he just bored. I don't know. You know. Okay. Like, I can't tell you who to choose. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if I could, I would. I'd definitely be like, oh, she not cute enough for you. Because I have said that to him before. Other, other girls that, you know, that I've, I've met. Like, oh, she's definitely not cute enough for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be mean or nothing, but... I'm just in my opinions, okay? I'm in my opinions. If she cute enough for you, then I'm going to tell you. But she got to be worth something, too. So, I mean, she, even if she ain't cute enough for you, if she's about something, then cool. So, you know, he invites her over. And I don't really like people coming to my house. So, he pays for her a lift to come over. So, he goes outside and gets to, gets her out the lift. So, I'm thinking, you know, okay, whatever. And I'm sitting in the living room. And my daughter, Nay, is by the Christmas tree. And this is just recently. This was right after Christmas. This was after Christmas and shit. I don't even think the new year has started. Or maybe it did. I can't remember. So my daughter Nate was like, why is the door wide open? Because it was at night. And I was like, oh, was the one out there to meet his, to get his little girlfriend out the, the cab? And she was like, oh, okay. So they walk in. And like, I can never tell how my face looks. But when she walked in. She did not look like the picture, honey. She looked like the Michelin tire man. You know the Michelin tire thing? She had on some like vanilla color velour sweatsuit. Mm-hmm. And she did not look like her picture. Maybe her face did, but it was she must have she must have used like the weight um loss filter where you can make your face look slimmer. Because when I seen her in person, honey, um, listen. I was just sitting there, and they was like, your mommy, you was like, I probably was, because I did feel myself like, okay, listen, bitch, we not about to do this here. My daughter, Nay was like, she looked like a parachute. I said, a parachute? She said, yeah, her whole outfit, she looked like a parachute. She was like, Wuzzle got um, catfish, and I was like, no, he didn't. He he seen her picture already on Instagram. He seen her. She was like, no, Wuzzle got catfish. I'm telling you, he got catfish. That's not Wuzzle type. I was like, well, he showed me her picture. 
And I was like, and this is her picture. And she was like, Wuzzle got catfished. And I seen Wuzzle's face, but I, I didn't pay no mind. So I was like, I texted him. I was like, by 12 o'clock, your little friend needs to, to be out of my house. You know what I'm saying? Because I just, something about her, I just didn't like. And because she wasn't cute enough for him. And plus the pictures, it was the pictures. Like, your picture and the way you came up in here looking, honey, did not look, mm-mm. No. So, you know, she left. And, like, this was before the new year. Because on New Year's Day, I had the meeting. And we was talking about relationships. And then I said to Buzzle, where's your little girlfriend that summer? He was like, oh, please, that is not my girl. And I was like, what, what happened? And he was like, I did not know she looked like that. And so I turned to Nay and I was like, ooh, Nay said you did get catfished. She was like, yeah, because she did catfish the hell out of me, ma. She did not tell me she was that big. And she didn't even tell me she had a kid. Like, see what I'm talking about? You can go. I was like, oh, okay. Because, um, yeah, I didn't think she was cute enough for you. And um, mm -hmm. Nay said she looked like a parachute. And I just was like, mm. he's like, yeah, ma, did you see my face? And I was like, I seen your face, but your face always be looking like that. So I didn't know if that was your face for when the girl came in. It was like, you took too long to text me and tell me, oh, your friend got to leave by 12 o'clock. I was waiting for you to text me and tell me like a minute after she got here that she got to leave. I said, well, shit, if I were you and she got in the cab, I would have told the cab driver, hold on. You could take that bitch back where the fuck she came from. Seriously. I said, so you never even seen her in person? And he was like, no. I said, let me tell you something. Don't ever in your life meet some fucking strange bitch off of fucking social media and invite her to my home because she can tell you all of this shit that she looked like that and that's her. And then when the bitch show up to my house, it's, it's a dude dressed as a woman. And then you have a fucking, you then, then there's some shit that pop off here. Don't ever invite no strange bitch to my motherfucking house that you have never met and haven't kicked it with for a while. That bitch could have been crazy, a murderer. I would have had to try to, I would have had to kill this bitch up in here. I would have had to pop at her. I, you know what I'm saying? I would have had to do something to this bitch. I don't know her. This is what I'm talking about. Catfish. Okay. I said, this is the second time that happened to you. Do not bring no strange fucking catfish, Instagram, social media bitch to my house again. I thought you knew her because if I would have known her and I, if I would have seen her picture, I wouldn't have fucked with her, but I thought you knew her because the way she looked. No, he was catfish. So this is what I'm talking about. Don't be surprised if Aiden don't look anything like Aiden or he ain't like the person that you think he is. This is the whole thing. What you should do, sweetheart, is just chill and leave fucking Hunter alone. He's a loser. You didn't, He catfished you or did he did not catfish you? I don't know what Hunter did, but let me tell you something. You drink all day. You smoke all day. You ain't got no job. You ain't got no car. You ain't got no prospects. You ain't got shit but some drugs and wine or alcohol on you. Baby, keep your ass distance from me. That is the answer for you, sweetheart. Kiki, he ain't nothing but trouble. It is 2019, bitch. You need, this is a new year, honey. Move on. He was last year's news, okay? That nigga was last year's news. Now we moving on. He was from September. He texts you whenever he wants some of that black cootie cat. Therefore, he was last year's news. Girl, let him go and block his ass and be about your business. If you want to give Aiden a chance, that's cool, whatever. You know, get the feel of him you know, figure him out and shit, but don't jump into the fire just like that because he's in army and he's FaceTiming you. Sweetheart, listen. Sometimes, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not throwing no shade, but bitches be in relationships and then they get out of one and then they just jump into the next one. And then they be wondering why they've been screwed over or hurt or the nigga, the new nigga don't treat them like shit or the last nigga don't treat them like shit because y'all done left one fucking bad situation to go to another one. And it had to be a bad situation. People don't break up just because they ain't got shit to do. They break up because of situations, bad situations, bad as in cheating, lying, stealing, whatever. People break up for situations, reasons, or can't spend enough time. That's a situation. Okay. So in, in reality, why break up with somebody just to go with somebody else that you just met? And you don't even know this nigga. Like that'd be the problem. I think like, the, listen, to me, there'd be like a little bit too many thirsty bitches, okay? Thirsty. What you do with your stuff is your business. I don't give a fuck what you do with it because what I do with my stuff is my business. But 
this ain't even got to do with the stuff here. It got to do with the stuff mentally and up here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have your mind right to be in a relationship with anybody. If your mind ain't correct, then your shit is going to be like, it's going to crumble. Like, seriously, ain't good shit going to always happen for you. You have to have your mind right and your spiritual right in order to be able to cope with another person and indulge with them and give them your attention and be in relationship you know what i'm saying like this is the part where i don't understand the bitch you get out of a relationship with a nigga that knocked her around cussed her out cheated on her to go with another dude just just like that like a month or so like i mean there's there's a healing process to everything and i think like with a healing process you, it, you need to involve yourself in it, meaning you need to get to know who you are and what the fuck you've been through. So that way, the next shit that you, you get yourself into, the next relationship that you get yourself into, it don't be you no know, bullshit. Of course, it's going to be some bullshit, but it don't be no major bullshit to where you, you know, you like, you know what? I got to leave this nigga alone. That's the problem. That's the problem. And I know when you're young, you want to have fun, you want to date. That's cool. That's cool. You can date, but don't give your all. Don't put your all into a relationship so seriously, so quick like that. Because when you do, you become vulnerable to shit that you didn't even expect. You know what I'm saying? Now, here it is. You fall head over heels for this this dude in the Army, Aiden. Because y'all speak and y'all FaceTime every day. And he's so sweet. He gives you all his attention. Well, let's just put it like this. He's so sweet because y'all haven't been together. And, of course, he's going to give you attention and get to know you and be so kind to you because that's his representative. What the fuck you think that the nigga's gonna just treat you like shit off the rip and not pay you attention? Because if he did that, you wouldn't want to fuck with him, which would leave him to fucking up his chances of getting the punani or getting the booty or getting whatever he wanted to get from you. So of course, Aiden's gonna be mad sweet in the beginning and he's gonna give you all this tension and he's gonna FaceTime you. That's what people do in the beginning of any type of relationship to get to know the next person. I ain't gonna come to you guys and be bitches and be on here when I first made you to tell like, fuck y'all bitches. I don't give a shit if y'all watch my videos anyway. Fuck all y'all. I ain't gonna do that because if I did that, y'all wouldn't wanna watch me. Of course, I'm gonna come through and be like, hey, you guys, welcome to my channel. Blah. And I still do that because I, this is the type of person I am. But you know what I'm saying? If I was to come across as being like bitchy and rude and mean, y'all wouldn't wanna fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, Aiden is being nice to you because that's his representative, bitch. This is their representative. You got one, I got one, everybody got one, okay? We all got a representative. That's why the fuck they call representatives, okay? Don't matter if you working for this bitch or that bitch. Represent your goddamn self. You ain't gonna represent yourself ratchetly. I mean, yeah, true indeed, there are some bitches and niggas that ra represent themselves ratchetly. But if you really want something relationship, job, whatever. You're going to represent yourself to the full extreme, to the right way. So yeah, Aiden's real sweet and, and shit like that because he's just getting to know you. He ain't going to come off like that. And yeah, y'all might FaceTime and do all that good shit. But sweetheart, let me tell you something. Don't just give y'all all and be like, oh, it's all about Aiden. It's all about Aiden right now. Because sweetheart, that will get you real fucked up and real vulnerable and your relationship will go to shit. So get to know who you are and stop attracting losers like Hunter. And that way you wouldn't have to second guess yourself and be emailing me about who the fuck you should be with or what the fuck you should do. Because what the fuck you should do is leave Hunter the fucking loser alone. Hunter the loser alone and go about your business and just make friends with Aiden. And if it progresses onto something else, then that's great. But leave Hunter's drinking, smoking ass alone, non-job non-motivated ass right where the fuck he needs to be was with his friends and his mama house girl goodbye so now we're gonna move on to the next so i hope i reassure kiki what the fuck she needs to do because i'm just saying what the fuck would y'all do if a nigga was drinking and smoking all day long like and didn't have no job and shit like who in their right mind will put themselves through misery why the fuck would you want to punish yourself Girl, that is a question that you should answer for yourself. So this is the next and the last one. And this, of course, is about a dude, okay? Hi, my name is, let's see. We got to change her name too. Bria. So I wanted to see your point, get your point of view in the situation. Situation. I was with this guy. We had slept together once. After that night, he was really sweet and asked me out again. Then he started canceling and started acting weird and distanced towards me. However, we kept talking and he asked me out two times but never gave an exact date of when we would meet up. This last time, he was telling me that he wanted to be with me like the last time, meaning have sex. We already have three months. We've already, see, we've already had three months without seeing each other. So he's once to have sex again 
but he tells me that in a couple of weeks, in a couple of weeks, we'll meet. So I got mad and I told him, forget it, that his life is too busy. He didn't respond to my text message that day. The next day, I found out he blocked me on Snapchat. Then unblocked me. So I'm confused. You think he unblocked me so I can add him back and beg for him? That was it. Bree, sweetheart, first of all. So you met this guy. I don't know what the guy's name is. We're going to call him Alan. So Bree basically met this guy named Alan. They slept together. After that, you know, that night he was really sweet and he asked her out again, but he kept canceling on a date. Then he gave her another two times. He asked her out, never said what date it is. Then he comes around, you know, beats around the bush. Yeah, I want to fuck again. I want to do what he did the last time, which was fuck. She was like, you know what? But he said, we'll meet in a couple of weeks. So you're telling me that we're going to meet in a couple of weeks because you want to fuck. Then, you know what I'm saying? She's texting him. He don't respond. It's like the same shit. Like, okay. Then he then he blocks her on Snapchat and then unblocks her. So she's wondering, should she, is he doing that so she can put him back on her page and beg for him? Let me tell y'all. What, okay, first of all, what is with the Snapchat shit? Like, I have Snapchat. I don't even use it like that because it's boring to me. I just, I cannot be on somewhere all day long fucking doing FaceTimes and, and, and shit like that. I can't do that shit. I just cannot do that. And I don't know what this, like the, the prior email said, his Snapchat score is going up. What the fuck is a Snapchat score? Is that where, is it, how do you get a Snapchat score? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck, Snapchat score or number? What the fuck is she talking about? Like, what do you, like, the more you Snapchat, you get a score or something? I guess my shit is real fucking low, probably in the negatives, because I, I don't really like Snapchat. But, okay, so what do people not communicate on their phones anymore? They just communicate on Snapchat. Because I, I noticed that my daughter, a 16-year-old daughter, she texts her friends through Snapchat. Like, why would you do that? I would just rather text you through my text messaging through my phone carrier so that way I don't have to go through Snapchat and look for your message and I could just get the chime. Like, I don't know. Y'all make it so difficult on yourselves. You make it more harder than what it needs to be. Like, why would you want to ch Snapchat text when you could just text through your regular phone? Makes no sense to me, but whatever. Maybe because you don't want to give the person your number, but these are her best friends, so they know her number. But I don't know. So maybe that's what it is. You don't want to give that particular person your actual phone number, so you just decide to communicate through Snapchat or whatever. If that's what it is, then may it, let me tell you something. First of all, if somebody don't want to give me their phone number, but they want to Snapchat me, then I don't want to fuck with you. Because why would I want to fuck with you when you don't even want to give me your real phone number? You just want to Snapchat me all the time. So that means you're hiding something. That's that's what I think. But, you know, I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. So, nigga, you only want to Snapchat message me, but you don't want me to message you through your phone, your carrier, your network carrier. Because that means I have your phone number and you don't want that to pop up on your phone. Because maybe you live with somebody and you don't want that bitch to see it or that nigga to see it. I don't know. But I just feel like, listen, um, just text me, regular text me. Don't, I hate when people message me through Instagram too. Like, I don't get the notifications like that. And I'm not going to keep going back and forth to Instagram looking for your messages. Like, I'm just not going to do that. But, so he blocks her on Snapchat and then he unblocks her. Okay. So I'm not really sure how many days he blocked you for, but I do know that when you post something on Snapchat, it lasts for like 24 hours. So maybe the dude posted something that he really didn't want you to see, like him and his other girlfriend snuggle booed, snuggle booed up, you know what I'm saying? Snuggle booed up, cuffed up. Maybe he didn't want you to see that. Who knows? But y'all haven't seen each other in three months. Y'all met each other once and had sex with each other. And he's canceled out on dates with you. And then the next thing you know, he's telling you that he wants to do what y'all did the last time, which was fuck. Let me tell you, sweetheart, let me tell you something. His, is his life too busy? His life may be busy and it may not fucking be busy. But I tell you what, he ain't got room in it for you. Okay? I'm sorry to say, Bree, but it ain't got room in there for you. When a nigga's acting shady and... You done spoke to him and you ain't seen him in three months and then he's canceling on dates with you. And then the only thing he's telling you that he want to fuck you with again, that means that he don't really have no respect for your ass. If he really did have respect for you and you was about something, you was worth something, then a nigga wouldn't just tell you, let's just meet up to fuck, okay, or cancel on you. He would be a gentleman about the shit and he would come through pick you up, take you on a date, and treat you ladylike. But other than that, he ain't doing none of that but wanting to hit it again. That's where the problem lies at. 
You guys always think that a nigga's being sweet. Just like she said, he was so sweet that night. Well, let's see. I know I'm about to get the pussy. Why the fuck would I be mean to this bitch that I just never met? It would be different if we was married and then we had an argument. I still can get the pussy. But I didn't even know you. I just met you. Of course, I'm going to be extra nice. I'm going to be looking in your eyes, okay, Bree? And I'm going to be like, damn, you got the prettiest glassy eyes I ever see. I love your bald head and scalp. It looks so good on you. You wear it so well. And your pale skin and your pink lips look gorgeous, baby. And in the back of my mind, all I'm seeing is the bitch that look like this. Like, oh, yeah. I'm be real nice to the bitch because I want some pussy. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Of course he's going to. He ain't going to tell you like, oh, yeah, you bitch, you look ugly. Oh, look at you. You ain't got no hair. You bald-headed bitch. He's not going to tell you that. Of course he's going to be nice to you. Why the fuck would he be nice? This is the problem with y'all young people and even mature women. Y'all think that when a nigga be nice to y'all when y'all first get to meet him, y'all be like, oh, he's so sweet. Okay, so, and because he's so sweet, you should get with him? That don't really validate a reason for getting with somebody that they so sweet. I'm sorry, but there's no checkbox on my list that says, well, because he's so sweet, I'm going to get with him. I don't give a fuck how sweet your ass is. Do you have this? Do you do this? Do you do that? What's, what are you about? I don't give a fuck how sweet you are. Yeah, everybody's fucking sweet. Shit, I could be nice as pie. The fucking meanest person, a serial killer, could be sweet, okay? When I say a serial killer can be sweet, yes, a serial killer can be sweet. You know what I'm saying? He dating you and shit, and his whole agenda is to fucking kill you. But he's going to be real sweet to you in the beginning. Why the fuck would he come to you and be like, I like to kill people. That's what I do. And when I get with you, I don't care who you is. Like, yeah, he gonna be sweet. Y'all females, wake the fuck up, okay? Just because a nigga or a man is sweet to you don't mean that he's the best thing in the world, okay? That does not mean that shit. He's so sweet, okay? He's so sweet that he ain't seen you in three months and he's been canceling on dates. And let's see, he's so sweet that the next thing he tells you is he just want to fuck you like he did the last time. Yes, that's really sweet. Oh my God, I would love for a man to tell me that. Like, I would love to get canceled on, on several dates. And then the next thing he tells me is, you know what, I want to hit it the next time we together like we did the first time, even though I ain't seen you in like four or five months. I want to hit that pussy again. Oh, he's so sweet. That was so sweet to say to me. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all naive motherfuckers better wake up. Okay, I don't I don't be on here to bash men because that's not what I'm doing. I'm talking about any type of relationship in general. Because when I say, yeah, he's so sweet, I also say, yeah, we all real sweet. Okay, that don't mean shit. I'm not bashing men. What I'm telling y'all is reality, sweetheart. Men can do it and women can do it the same thing. Don't matter what sex race you're going after, they all sweet in the beginning, okay? Men, women, especially if they want something. Just because a person is sweet to you does not give you the validation to say that I'm going to get with this motherfucker because he's so sweet and he's a good person. Let me give him some cootie cat and give him a baby and marry him and this and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Nah, bitch. That's the problem. Sweet is great. Sweet is not even anything extra. Being nice and being sweet to somebody, you don't get no kudos and cookies for that because that's what you should do. That's how you should be. You should be respectable to people. You should be kind to people. You should be nice to people, okay? You should be on your best behavior. So you don't get no kudos and extras for that shit because that's life. That's what's supposed to go on, you know what I'm saying? However, what a bitch needs to do is is he taking care of himself? Does he have a legitimate job? Is he a respectable human being? These are just some of the characteristics you should be looking for in a man. Not that they sweet. Okay, sweetheart, that's great. But everybody's sweet. Everybody can be sweet. And we can all lose our sweetness and turn that shit into real bitterness. So, okay, yeah, you notice that he got nice traits. He's sweet in the beginning. But does that mean that nigga gonna act like that later on in a relationship? Okay. Is his sweet ass got a real job? Does his sweet ass, is he financially stable? Is his sweet ass not a drug addict? Is his sweet ass not an alcoholic? Is his sweet ass not a baby daddy to 10 other kids? Is his sweet ass living on his own and not with his mama? Hello? Okay. Let's put, if you want to use the word sweet so much, put these words in front of, put sweet in front of those questions and ask yourself that, okay? The nigga fucked you, didn't see you, made dates with you, canceled them, told you we'll meet each other in a few weeks, 
told you we we're gonna fuck again and you still going along with it and now you don't want to talk to him and then he done blocked you unblocked you and you wondering if you should beg for him first of all let me tell you something I wouldn't even be interested in you. If I've seen you one time, I still wouldn't be interested in you like that. If we've seen each other a week later, just one appearance with you does not make my heart flutter and skip a beat and want to be with you for the rest of eternity, okay? Or want me to fall head over heels for you. So yeah, we might have fucked that night, but just because I fucked you does not mean that I'm vulnerable for you, okay? You was just a fuck, okay? Trust me. I've had those. And yes, my husband does know about it. I've had one of those. Who gives a shit? Okay, so we had sex. That don't mean I want to be your girlfriend, all right? But here it is, you talking about, does he want me to beg for him? Sweetheart, you have been begging already. The nigga is canceling dates on you. You are a convenience to him. And let me see something. If a nigga tell me, I'm we're going to see each other in a couple weeks, but we live in the same surrounding areas, because obviously you do because you met each other. And I haven't seen you in three months. Nigga, don't waste your time. That means that he got something else going on in life, meaning another person. Because within three months, there's 90 days. He could have made one day for you out of three months. I'm just saying. One day, I'm pretty sure he was free more than one time out of 90 days. But you talking about should you beg for him? No, sweetheart. I think you should not add him back to your Snapchat and un- Add him from yours and just be done with it, okay? If the nigga messaged you, again, do not respond to the shit. This is what I don't get. Maybe because I've been through so much in life and I've been through enough in relationships that I'm just not going to tolerate shit. I'm not about to get myself worked the fuck up over the relationship and be stressed the fuck out and be sitting there like, when is he going to text me back? When is he going to respond? Is he responding yet? When is he going to call? I'm not about to sit there and do that with somebody. Like, come on, man. I have better things to do than get myself involved with somebody who really don't give a fuck about me. And they see me in three weeks and they keep canceling dates on me and then tell me the next thing he want to do is do this. And do Let me tell you something. Y'all bitches got a lot of patience. Y'all niggas got a lot of patience with these lame ass bitches and these lame ass niggas. Like when I say lame, meaning when they treat you like shit in the beginning of the so-called relationship, you still keep going along with the shit. If a nigga don't respond to your text messages and emails and phone calls in the beginning of the relationship and he cancels on you, that right there lets you know the nigga ain't about shit and he really ain't into you. But some of y'all motherfuckers still continue to go on with it. Like, are we that desperate for a relationship? There's so many men out there in the world. There's so many women out there in the world that you don't have to stoop so low as to get with a beauty when you got, like, this. Like, seriously, let's let's just be real about the shit. That's why I don't fuck with the social media, and I don't need to because I have a person. But we don't have to be that desperate to where we have to find ourselves, like, putting up with some negative bullshit in the beginning of a relationship. Like, come on, man. Wake the fuck up. Have some self-respect. Have some self-pride, some self-esteem. When a motherfucker is doing you dirty and treating you shitty in the beginning of a relationship that you are trying to form, then that right there goes to tell you that the rest of the relationship is going to get worse, no better, and why are you wasting your fucking time? Bottom line. Wake the fuck up, ladies. You know what I'm saying? I have wasted my time on relationships in my past. And I have used these past relationships as tools and ways of learning to grow up and better myself and the person that I choose to be with, okay? Have I been perfect in all of my choosings or whatever? No, I have not, okay? That's with trial and effort. I'll be the first to tell you, no, I didn't pick the perfect person to have a baby with the first time or the second time or the third time, the fourth and the fifth. My husband, okay, okay, of course, and he may have been a little like messed up in the head, not like crazy, but he had his own flaws and issues. But he fixed those, and I'm very proud of him for that. But, yeah, I had to get it right eventually. He had to get it right, too. And I got it right while I divorced him, and then, you know, he got himself together, and then I got it right by getting back with him. But I'm just saying, like, y'all, some of y'all just feel like, okay, I can change this man. I could change her. Or, you know what I'm saying? I could change this woman. I could change this man. 
Stop feeling like you can pick up a stray puppy and train it to use the bathroom outside and be a totally different domesticated animal. Let's let's not let's not let's not because not everybody we cannot save everybody. We are not save a hoes. We cannot save everybody. Sometimes you got to let that fucking dirt on the bottom of your shoe, that shit on the bottom of your shoe, stay there and throw them fucking shoes the fuck out on some real shit. Like I'm saying, don't clean it the fuck off. You just got to get rid of that shit. Point blank, period. So when a nigga ain't text me, ain't seen me, only want to fuck with me, sweetheart, that's right there blind. Like, you know what? I think it's sometimes it's a lot of these young women who be emailing me and I'm, I'm happy to get an email and I would be more than happy to respond, but I just want the youth, the younger generation to just open their eyes some and realize like not everything is about dick and pussy. Not everything is about social media. This is a life. You have to learn to be a responsible, productive human being in the world. And not everything involves social media and telling everybody what you're doing every moment of the day or meeting people on social media and being desperate for relationships and it, which leads you into a misguided fucking represent just a misguided path. You know what I'm saying? Like we all have been misguided and I have been misguided and strayed enough times to where it's like, you know what, April, I'm not about to let anybody walk over me. I'm not about to tolerate the bullshit. I'm not about to let anybody get over on me. I'm not going to deal with the fuckery. So I understand and I get it that sometimes we do become vulnerable as a person because we are not so, we are not within, we are not just 100% within our own selves. And we sometimes need another person to carry us or make us happy. And just like I had to explain to my daughter, you can't be happy with somebody else unless you're happy within yourself. You can't rely on people to make you happy if you're not happy within yourself. And that's a known fact. Like, if I'm a miserable person and I'm angry, I can't rely on my kids to make me happy. I have to be happy within myself. I have to change within myself. And so a lot of times with these young women, they feel like they can mold a person and change them. And when you see, like, bad shit and a red flag in the beginning of a relationship that you're trying to form, bitch, it's going to be a fucking red, black, and blue flag in the end of the relationship. So that means it's time for you to grow up. Get the fuck over the one night stand because that's what the fuck it was. It's nothing to admit to it that you had a one night stand. You know what I'm saying? You had one, you had one. That was your experience. Now move on. You know what I'm saying? You learn from that shit. That is a life lesson. You learn from shit like that. Some people like to have one night stands. I don't see like the joy in having a one night stand with a person that you just met because you don't know if they got AIDS or just, you don't know. You just don't know. But if you make that mistake, fine. Granted, that leads you to learn a lesson for the next time around. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't rely on this nigga to come through and take you out and bring you a better roses when you just gave him the pussy. If you just met him and you just gave him the pussy, what makes him think, what makes you think that he's going to be respectable towards you and want to make you wifey material? I know if I was a dude and the bitch just gave me the pussy the first night I met her, I ain't trying to get serious with her because then that makes me think like, did she give the pussy to another dude that she just met and another dude? That that leads to all type of things. And then it's like, okay, I really didn't get to know you. I just know that your pussy smell like this or feel like this. I don't really get to know you. I don't even know if you're a bitchy person or whatever. I don't get to know you. So it's a one night stand. Not a lot of relationships build off of a one night stand. Like they don't really become like so like that great with a one night stand. And some of them do. But what I'm saying to you is, sweetheart, he was a one night stand. He ain't trying to wife you. He ain't trying to bring you out on no dates. He got a girl. Obviously he does. Because if he didn't, he would have been made time for you. And I'm saying this bluntly like this because I'm not about to sit here and sugarcoat no shit for you and you still sitting there talking about should I beg him. Bitch, no. Okay, Brie? Just go ahead about your business. It's the new fucking year. I'm not going to keep telling y'all motherfuckers this for the whole year round that you need to stop with these sorry ass losing men and women and get on your grind and get on your feet. This the real world. Grow the fuck up. Niggas ain't shit. Bitches ain't shit sometimes. If you have a one night stand with somebody, don't expect the whole world or from them, okay? Don't expect the whole world from them. But if you see a red flag in the beginning of a relationship, that means that it's not going to get no better. It's going to get worse. Stop wasting your time because they're not even coming through with their representing and they just coming through with who they really the fuck are. Now you done seen him for who the fuck he really is and it's time to go on. That goes for Brie and Kiki, the both of them. She got Hunter and she got this kid named Alan, I think I called him. 
bunch of losers. They not worried about nothing but getting some cootie. Cootie cat. Plain and simple. So, you guys, this real talk has been fun. It's been a great one. I guess I'm going to go downstairs and make another wig um, and take some pictures today. But I love you guys of my wigs, not of myself. I love you guys. Make sure you stay diva and divolicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Um, me and my daughter, Nave, actually, we have came up with a new name for Real Talk because I just wanted to change some things up. And I'm still contemplating it. But um, I will let you guys know on the next Real Talk. I love you. Stay diva and delicious. If you are wondering where the wigs are at on my website, just check this weekend because I will be posting some up then. But I'll definitely post a um, notice on my Instagram and Facebook about it. So I'm about to go make my wigs. Make sure you check out BHD Beauty. I will post their links below. If you don't get nothing, you got to get this. But if you don't have this and you like to make wigs, then you definitely need this. But you should get one of these too because these this thing, I love her. She's like... I really do love her. She has been a lifesaver. I have styled so many wigs before, but once I put it on her, I can tell the difference. Like, this makes a world of difference. She ain't got no eyelashes no more, but I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? I got some. I'm just losing some on her. But she has some glass eyes. This is really well made. I've seen some that don't really have glass eyes, but she's really well made. Really well made. So, BHD, BHD Beauty on Amazon. I will post their info below. I love Amazon. I should go on Amazon right now. You know what? I actually have to. I have to buy my grandson, who's going to be six on the 12th of January, a gaming chair. So, I'm about to go on Amazon right now. So, you guys, I love you. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. And if you have a real talk, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put your name or subject line, real talk, email address is in the description box below. And I will see you guys because I'm going to go.